control, take off the blindfold. Pick up a book, read about stories that are told. Live in a baby land, have you come figure your role? I'm a freedom fighter, can you hear it in my tone? So we weren't changing the inner man, but now God said to change the inner man. Change the mind. You understand? Change the mind, that's what we need to do. Any questions? We are proving that you so-called Jamaican are the Israelites. Let me get fringes. Let's get some commandments. Which picture? This one? Yes. Hold up that, hold up that sign. So the brother is asking. Okay, my brother. We are bringing out the image of Christ, you know. You sure you don't want to stick around for this one? I'm not going to take long, man. Just two minutes. So the brother is asking, who is this? Many of you may be curious as well. Who is this? You may be saying, who is this black ugly man right here? But let's see according. Let me ask the question now. Um, sister right here. Who is this? Who they say this is? This image, the picture. Just look at the picture. Don't look at any of the words right there. Who is this? You don't know this image? Jesus. You said God. You said Jesus. Who is this, brother? Who you said this is? Who you said this is? Jesus. The brother said Jesus. So we think this picture is Jesus. But is this really Jesus? Let's find out. And I need another brother to hold up this sign. John, come around. Let's see if this, which of these signs are Jesus? Wait, Help me. Wait, 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 wait. Let's bring out the scripture Mark, to Mark prove the scripture so wait, wait. if this, that is wait, biblical wait. and to see which of these images is the depiction of Christ. Let's get Revelation. We're going to the last book of the Bible to see which is Jesus. Revelation 1 verse 1. Revelation chapter 1 verse 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must surely come to pass. So it says the revelation means the revealing of Jesus Christ. Now let's jump to verse 14. Revelation 1 verse 14. His head and his hairs were white like wool. So this man, is his hair white like wool? No. Is this man here white like wool? What is, in fact, what is wool? What is the texture of wool? What is the te Hold on, brother, hold on. What is the texture of wool? The brother point on his head. We have a woolly here. Woolly, the texture of wool is rough. Kinky, nappy, afro. That is wool. So Christ here was woolly, not stringy. Like this man right here. Christ here was woolly. Read. Brother, listen, listen. That's how you learn. Read. As white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire. This man's eyes not as a flame of fire. This man's eyes hazel, blue, or green. This man's eye is red. Why is it that Christ's eyes red like lamps of fire? Now let's get the understanding of that. Let's read that in Genesis. Genesis 49 verse 12. His eyes shall be red with wine. Because Christ drank wine in moderation. So... Does this man I read? No. So that strike two against this image right here. It's more adding up with this image, right? Read on. Read on. And his feet like unto fine brass. Sister, I'm looking at your feet. Is it the same complexion as your face? No? Okay. So your feet and your face is the same complexion. Unless you are bleaching. But read on. As if they burned in a furnace. So Christ's feet was as brass. You have that coin? This is like brass. The brass is a derivative of brown. Brass is a derivative of brown. As if it was burned in a furnace. Get me Daniel 10 and, and 5. Or 5 and 5. 10 and 5? 10 and 5. Let's prove that color is in the Bible. Daniel the prophet also saw Christ and depict the image of Christ in the Bible. Because what we are also going to prove is that Moses was a black man. That's right. The Jews were black. That's right. Paul the apostle was black. That's right. The disciples were black. That's right. Solomon was black. That's right. God himself is black. Read that. Right. The book of Daniel chapter 10 verse 5. Then I lifted up, then I lifted up mine eyes and looked and behold a certain man clothed in linen, whose loins were girded with gold, 
with fine gold of Euphas. His body was his body also was like the burial, and his face as the appearance of lightning, and his eyes as lamps of fire. In any drunk wine, read. And his arms and his feet like in color. Hold on. So Daniel is seeing Christ, and Daniel is describing how Christ looked. Because when you have on a garment, the two things you can look at is someone's hand and his feet. So Christ, John, Daniel is now saying, his arms and his feet like in color. Let me see if, it, if it's white. Read. To polish brass. Polished brass is black when you burn it in a furnace. That's right. So Christ is a black man according to the Bible. That's right. Let's prove that. Solomon is a black man also according to the Bible. Solomon, the wisest man, is a black man. And Solomon was Christ's great, great, great grandfather. Read that. The book of Solomon, Song of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 1. The Song of Songs, which is Solomon's. Verse 5. I am black. I am what? I am black. Solomon is what? I am black. Solomon is a black man according to the Bible. Let's get what the, the, the color of the Jews are. Jeremiah 14 and verse 2. The real Jews, you so-called Jamaicans, are the real Jews. You are the biblical Israelites according to the Bible. I want any one of you to look up the word ghetto. You know what ghetto means? The, where the, the Jews dwell. The real Jews dwell in ghettos. That's how they define ghetto as. Read that scripture, Jeremiah 14 and verse 2. Jeremiah chapter 14 verse 2. Judah mourneth and the gates thereof language. They are black. So Judah is one tribe out of the nation of Israel. It says the Jews are black. The Jews are black. So it says Judah. Judah the Jews. Read it from the top again. Jeremiah 14 verse 2. Judah mourneth and the gates thereof languish. They are black unto the ground. Why did it say the Jews are black unto the ground? Why did it say that the Jews are black unto the ground? Let's get the understanding. Why did it say that the Jews are black unto the ground? Let's get the understanding. Genesis 2 verse 7. Testing, testing, testing. Why did it say that the Jews are black unto the ground? Look at the how many we are in St. Elizabeth, so we have a lot of farmers in St. Elizabeth. When they dig up the soil, how does the soil look? How does the soil look when they dig up the soil? What color does the soil have? Come on, people, I'm talking to intelligent people here. Different shades of what color? Brown or black. You understand? Different colors of black or red, but um the, the, it, the, the soil is red because of the backside. It's it's as chemicals in the soil. It's not how soil look. Here, the soil look, the soil look red because of chemicals. But the soil, the color of the soil is black or different shades of brown. Read Genesis two verse seven. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. So God formed man of the dust of the ground. Read. Go back now to Jeremiah fourteen and two. Jeremiah 14 verse 2 Judah mourneth and the gates thereof languish they are black unto the ground so the prophets even describe how the ground looks they said that the Jews are black unto the ground you understand lamentation we are proving that the Jews are black men we have just proven that Christ was black Solomon was black Moses is black and the Jews are black lamentations chapter 4 verse 8 their visage is blacker than a coal. So it says the visage, their facial, the face, how they look is blacker than coal. Get me the other one in Lamentations. Is it 10 and 5? 5 and 10. Jewish. Oh, yes, yes, my brother. <laughs> Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve. 
Virgin, that is Greek mythology. That is Christian lies. There were many people, just as our God created many birds, many fishes. There were more than one people on the earth, not just Adam and Eve. That's a lie. That's not biblical, brother. Right. After the that came in after the flood. After the flood, because Adam at that time. Oh, we, we were in the beginning. We were referred to as the sons of God. Get me Genesis 6 and verse 2. We were referred to as the sons of God. The other people were there, you know. But they, we didn't have different nations until after the flood. Then you have Shem, Ham, and Japheth, where Ham, a lot, Ham had a lot of sons that breaks up into um, Canaanites, the Egyptians, all of those. We have Shem. We came out of Shem. The Israelites came out of Shem. You understand? As well as Esau, some are uh, Abraham's sons. So there we, are, we have different, the variation of different nations coming after the flood. But what we really want to teach, brother, is that you are an Israelite. Do you know you're an Israelite? Do you know you're an Israelite? What is required to, for you as an Israelite? Mm -hmm. No, you're not an African, brother. You're not an African. Afri we are in Israel, Israelites. Africa is just what the land is called because when you go to Africa, you have over 50 countries in Africa. Which one are you from? That's the question. The Bible tells us how we end up in Africa and all of that kind of thing. But let's just read this and I'm going to invite another teacher. Um, Gen Genesis 6 and 2. The book of Genesis chapter 6 and verse 2. That the sons of God saw the daughters of men. So that's how we're referred to us. The sons of God. We were the sons of God. It's not everybody were the sons of God. We were the sons of God. No, the sons of God who we were then, we are now called Israelites. God's chosen people. You understand, brother? We're not going to get into any too, anything too deep. We are going. To, we are here to give our people the medicine they need. So you say you are Israel. So pretty much knowing that you are an Israelite, what is now required of you? Get me that. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter ten and verse twelve. And now Israel, what doth the Lord thy God require of thee? But to fear the Lord thy God, to walk in all His ways, and to love Him, and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul, to keep. The commandments of the Lord. So my brother, what is required of you is to, to keep the commandments. We are here and as an example. You understand? When we were in the world and everything, we repent. Because when we are in the world, we hear about being gallus. That's the mentality of young men nowadays, you know. Being gallus. You have to have enough women. You understand? Gal, gal, galore and everything. Calling our sisters whores and bees and treat them. We have, we, can, we have to stop that. God says we have to come back. Men have to come back. Get me Hebrews 13 and 4. Men have to come back. Obey marriage. You, you, you marry? Yeah, they see, that's the thing. You're old enough to, to, to marry. Stand up. Get a family. Learn responsibility. Take care of your house. You understand? Have your youth. Train up your youth. So you don't, don't be absent like many of the men's nowadays you understand that's that's the mentality and that's many of us don't have fathers many of us grow in the whole soul without the father these things have to stop them thing there is not godly god is going to put a man like that to death who don't really stand up for his family and these are the things we need to change read that hebrews 13 verse 4 marriage is honorable in all and the bed undefiled but who are mongers and adulterers God will judge. It says, you know, who is a whoremonger, brother? Who is a whoremonger? Who is a whoremonger? Who is a whore? All right. So you want to be a gallus. You want to have a lot of women. That is a whoremonger. So it says, marriage is honorable in all. Read. And the bed undefiled. But whoremongers and adulterers. God will judge. So it says God is going to judge whoremongers and adulterers. And how God judge you? 
Is it possible for a husband and a wife to catch syphilis, AIDS, and gonorrhea? If they're faithful, no. Is the man who is being a whoremonger going around having sex with whores, going to a strip club and everything, they have sex, and that's a whoremonger. And let's see how God, God is going to judge a man like that. Read. Deuteronomy 28, verse 61. Also, every sickness and every plague which is not written in the book of this law. So hold on. Do you, you heard about blue waffles, gonorrhea, crabs, all of them something, syphilis, them there's something on the right in the Bible. But God has said, every sickness and plague which is not written in this book, read, them will the Lord bring upon thee for breaking his commandments. Them will the Lord bring upon us. You understand? So we have to change, brother. We teach our young men to stand up, be fathers, be husbands. Not poor mongers. You understand me? Let me get fringes for the brother. This is one other thing, and I'm going to bring up another teacher. Let me get fringes for our brothers. Fringes. Numbers 15, verse 38. Read. I'll read from 37. The book of Numbers, chapter 15, verse 37. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments throughout their generations and that they put upon the fringe of the borders a ribbon of blue. So we have to put on the fringe of the borders a ribbon of blue. What do you think is the fringe? Look, these are fringes. So it says, on our garments, brothers, we should wear fringes. Read on. And it shall be unto you for a fringe, that he may look upon it, and remember all the commandments of the Lord, and do that. Remember the commandments of God and do them. You understand, bro? Get another, give me 1 Corinthians 11, verse 4, verse 3. This is, this is another simple commandment for our brothers to keep. I see a brother, you, you come and you listen, and you're listening very carefully. I like that. That's what all we need our brothers to do. Humble down and listen to the word. Read that scripture. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. So the head of every man is Christ. Christ is our head. Read. And the head of the woman is the man. Don't you ever suck up and, and, and follow a woman, brothers. Don't you ever follow after a woman. A woman was made for you to follow you. Those times are have, have, have gone. You understand? Don't you ever follow behind a woman. You're supposed to stand up as the man of God, keep God's commandments, and be the head. You shouldn't be following after a woman. You understand me? Read on. And the head of Christ is God. And so God is breaking it down. God is the head, Christ, man, then the woman. You understand? There's no 50-50 with the woman and the man. You understand? Read up. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonoreth his head. So who was your head? Who was the man's head? Who was the man's head? Jesus Christ. Christ is the man's head. So it says, every scripture that is coming out, or if you are being prophesied to, with your head covered, if you have on a cap, or a kerchief on your head, you dishonor it. Your head, which is? Christ. So when you hear this now, I'm sure you, you, you never heard about this. So what you have to do when you hear this? Knowing that the scripture is coming out. What you have to do? If your head is covered. Yes. So are you going to show God that you love him by removing your heart? It's a simple commandment, you know. Give the brother a round of applause. I'll praise this to the most side. You, you doing that, you're showing the most that you respect the most side. My brother. Are you going to do? Are you going to remove your head covering? I'll pray. Give the brother a round of applause. My brother right here now. My brother with the fly on his hand. Touch that brother. The two hot on your head. What are you going to do when you hear the scripture? Luke 15 and 7. What are you going to do? Take it off. Take it off, brother. That is showing, showing Christ that you honor Christ. Give the brother a round of applause. Luke 15. What is it? Luke 15 and 7. Read. The book of St. Luke chapter 15 and verse 7. I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth. So you see that the angels are rejoicing for anybody who hear this word and repent. That is repentance when you hear the commandments and you change. You understand? You never know, no, you know, no, you change. No, the sisters know. This is a law for the sisters. Read. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Chapter 11 and verse 4. Uh, 
So First Corinthians chapter 11. So this is the, the commandment for the sister now, read. How many sisters go to church right here? You go to church, sis? When you go to church, your head is covered in the church? Your head is covered in the church as well, sis? Okay, read. First Corinthians chapter 11, verse 4. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonoreth his head. Verse 5. But every woman that prayeth or prophesieth with her head uncovered, dishonoreth her head. So the woman should be doing the opposite. She should be putting her head covering on her head. You understand? So these are simple principles we should come back to as a nation. We should gather together. Come out of the seven-day church, man. Come out of the Pentecost, the, the Jehovah Witness, the, 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 the Presbyterian. We need to gather as a people. Get me Ephesians 4 and verse 3. We need to gather in one as a people. Because if we if we if we in different churches, we are speaking differently. We are speaking differently from everybody else. We need to gather as a people. You say the sister, yes, one baptism. One Lord, one faith. Read that scripture. Ephesians. But she's running. The word come out and we need to carry and but she's running. Read. Ephesians 4 verse 3. What is your denomination? We're not a denomination. That is the problem. Denomination is the problem. That's what we want to, to, to God is saying we to, you should gather together as a people. Get me Zephaniah 2 and 1. Brothers, may I, may I bring it up after this? Zephaniah 2 and 1. Read this. The book of Zephaniah chapter 2 verse 1. Gather yourselves together. Yea, gather together, O nation, O nations, O nation. What is talking about one nation, the Israelites? We need to gather together, read. Not desired. So God is saying we are not desired. Get me first Corinthians 1 and 10. No. Paul is gonna say the same thing. Paul says that we should gather, we should have speak the same thing. But re re listen, read this. Denomination is of the devil. Denomination is of that man right now. Look to hold up that man. This man in slavery with this image. Christ is a black man as we brought out earlier. With this image came Christianity. This was the same man who lynch your brothers, who lynch your mothers, who burn and send your sons and daughters into slavery. Let them work for 400 years. Give them rep This is the same man who set up. You have that sign? If you think a lie, may I tell? This is the same man. It says man-made religions. Um, John Smith created the Baptist religion in 1608. That was in slavery. Um, Charles Parham, a white man, created Pentecostal religion in 1901. That's another white man. Joseph Smith created the Mormons religion in 1830. That was also in the times of slavery. Charles T. Russell created Jehovah's Witness in 1872. And William Miller created the Seventh-day Adventist in religion in 1863. These religions were all created by the white man. You know why we don't have the yokes of iron on our necks anymore? Because they destroy us, they, want, they, they, they have us the way how they want us to think. They have the, relig the religion, so they, what they want us to keep and to follow. So now they say, oh, we have these people under full control. Now let's remove the chains. Because in slavery, they have one white man at the back. There's a picture of that. One white man at the back and they put, they put the taskmasters and the preachers like Paul Bogle and Sam Sharp who used to preach. And they tell them what to preach in the church. You understand? So with that man, tell you lies, Christmas, Easter, which is not in the Bible. That man tell us, say, follow different dynamics. No, God says to gather together as a people. Read 1 Corinthians 1 and 10 now. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 10. Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that we all speak the same thing. If I am in Seventh-day Adventist, if you are in Pentecost, are we speaking the same thing? If you are in Jehovah's Witness and you are in no man's religion, are we speaking the same thing? No. So Paul is saying, I beseech you, I beg you, brethren, to what? By the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. By the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is one thing that God requires. Read. That we all speak the same thing. And that there be no divisions among you. So Paul is saying that there shouldn't be any divisions among us. Whether by religion, whether by philosophy, politics, there shouldn't be any divisions. But aren't churches dividing our people? Yes. Read on. But that he be perfectly joined, to, perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. In the same judgment. That's what, give me um, 
um, Ephesians now, 4 and 3. Ephesians 4 and 3. Let's see what will glue us together as a people. Let us, let's see what will do that. Read. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 3. Endeavoring. It says endeavoring. When you endeavor something, what you do? You go after it. You want it. You pursue it. So we need to endeavor. Endeavor to do what? To keep the unity. The unity. If we are in different religions and philosophies, are we united? No. So we should endeavor to keep the unity right? of the spirit. So this is what is going to glue us together now. In the bond of peace. Spirit in the bond of peace. You understand? Read on. There is one body. One body. You see that? How can you be in Jehovah's Witness and, and uh, seven day and, and we are one body? No, we are divided. That's two body. You understand? Read on. And one spirit. And one spirit, which is the word of God. Read. Even as ye are called in one hope of your calling. One Lord. One faith. One baptism. So everything is one. And we need to gather together. Because look at this. We gather together. These are the nations that rule over us. There are, two, there are about 10% 10, are two, 10 of other nations on the planet here. When you look around, who owns the business? All the businesses. Across the island, who owns the businesses? The private sector, eh? The Chinese, Mr. Chin, don't. Mr. Chin have every store. Pan. You know, say when Mr. Chin come to Jamaica, Mr. Chin get a five-year tax release. Did you know that? So Mr. Chin don't have to worry about tax. Mr. Chin can. And guess what Mr. Chin come and sell our sisters? Guess. Bleaching cream and sell our brothers. We for putting up our sisters. God is a black man with woolly hair. That's right. And we are destroyed and we now know that. So our sisters are putting in weaves in their hair. Blonde, look at our sisters. Blonde in their hairs. You understand? No. So the Chinese can come with that and make millions of dollars and care about the money go to China. Send him, send him daughter and him son to university and have savings put on their bank account and we don't have nothing. So guess what? We need to come together. A lot of people here, St. Elizabeth, a lot of you farm. All you need to do, come out of the church. The tithe money when furthermore, Christianity say the laws of God are done away with. But, but why don't you keep one law in the Old Testament, which is tithes? And tithes is not money. You understand? So stop paying your tithes. God, the tithe is was a, a part of the sacrificial covenant, and that was done away with. Put your money together. Let's put our money together. And let's create our own businesses. You, don't, you think that is not hard? But because we hate each other now, we look at each other, and if, we, if any man have an argument, brother, if you and this man have an argument, guess how we resolve it? Fight. The least security, we can't sit down together and reason out as a brother. And say, bro, you know what I said? That's wrong. I'm sorry, you know. You understand? Get me Matthew 18 and verse. Matthew 18 verse. Let's show you, according to the Bible, how we should deal with our problems. Because we are going to have differences and we are going to have problems. But how does God say we should deal with it? Deal with each other. We cannot take up your machete and we gun and say, I'm going to kill the brother. Then. No, we cannot do that. These are things we have to change. Read. Say Matthew chapter 18 verse 15. Moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, go and tell him his fault. So if me do something bad, I may offend you, I may step on you too, brother. You understand? You should come to me and say, yo, Virgin, you do that, you know, I'm not like that, you know, I'm not like you, you, why you say you hurt my feelings? Read. And tell him his fault. So we're supposed to come and tell each other our faults. And me as a man supposed to say, yo, bro, sorry. Here, I'm not going to do that again. Sorry, I hurt your feelings. That, that's... With the spirit that our brothers have nowadays is the spirit of Cain. Because guess what? Moses said Cain was supposed to be his brother's keeper. But when, it, when, it, when the Moses check it out, what did Cain do to his brother? Him kill him. And him say, am I my brother's keeper? No. The Moses said we should love our neighbor as ourselves. Because if we are gathering together as a people, we cannot have any thieves around us. We cannot have any covetous spirit around us. We cannot have any adulterer around us. Because if this brother have him wife, you understand? We cannot have a man with the mind of an, uh, an adulterer because you, if you sleep with a brother wife, you understand? You're going to... Any man would any man would like a man to sleep with him wife? Huh? No! So we cannot have adulterers. So, so, so this brother, this brother is hearing us bringing out the laws. Now he's coming to us about foolishness about Jay in the Bible. 
What is Jay gonna do with crime in the, on the island? What is Jay gonna do? That brother is talking about his and his brother. Where are your fringes, brother? Where are your fringes? Where are your fringes? Our people don't know. Do anybody speak Hebrew out here? Any of you speak Hebrew? Brother, shut the hell up, man, and stop talking foolishness. We're here to tell our people the truth and what they need to do together as a people. You understand? So, as I'm saying before, if we are gathering as a people, covetous mind have to change. Bad mind have to change. Get me, get me, get me Leviticus 19, 17. Let's get that. Leviticus 19, 17 to 18. Let's show you. We cannot have grudge and envy. All of that need to change. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> good. So we cannot have those things. Read. Leviticus 19, verse 17. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. So the Bible said, don't hate each other. When we take up the gun and kill our brothers, we hate them. When we easily just want to like, fist our brother and, and fight with our brothers, that's hatred, man. Read. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor. And not suffer sin upon him. So if your brother is going off, you can you should rebuke him. I just rebuke that brother right now. Because that brother was talking foolishness. He knows that he's an Israelite. He's not doing the things that God requires him to do as an Israelite. Read on. Verse 18. Thou shalt not avenge. No. So say, thou shalt not avenge. Because that's a, not, that's a thing. We want to just take up knife and go now avenge yourself. God said, thou shalt not avenge. Read. Nor bear any grudge. Against, any what? No. Nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people. So when you see a brother have something, he may have a better house than you. He may have a better car. You grudge him for it. No. If we are building as men, if we are building a nation of people, we cannot have that mind to grudge and to envy each other. You understand? Get me Peter's. First Peter's 4 and verse 1. First Peter's 4. Let's go even more into it. First Peter's 4 and verse 1. Or is it second? Four? Where is it? Four. Uh, second. Go to second. Second Peter's four and verse one. There's a four? Um, two. Sorry. First Peter's two and verse... Hold on. Is this second? Yes. First Peter's. First Peter's two. First Peter's two. First Peter's two and verse one. Read that. The book of 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 1. We are for laying aside all malice. Hold on a minute. Do we bear malice against each other? God, do we, don't, we, don't we love to bear malice? So if a, if a brother says something to you and I like it or him never give you some money where you ask for it, whatever the case may be. Our people love to bear malice. But God is saying, what? We are for lay aside all malice so god said lay aside all malice we shouldn't be a malice if if something happened between me and your brother just come and tell me we work it out and we move on let's say scripture say let brotherly love continue you understand read on and all guile so lay aside all malice and all guile read and hypocrisy and hypocrisy we like to be hypocrites may i talk about something and when we gone behind when when me gone you gone behind my back and stop me in the back being a hypocrite. You understand? But buy it and them something. That's what the Bible is saying. Lay aside that. We cannot have that mindset if we gather. Because you see, when the Chinese and the white man look at us, they laugh at us because they say, look at those niggas. You can imagine 90% of Jamaican on the island of Jamaica. But the Chinese man come here and a prosper more than we. That shouldn't happen. These are the things that are affecting us from being united as a people. We, we have to clean up ourselves. Read. And envies, envy. We cannot have envy. So we have to lay aside malice, guile, envy, read, hypocrisy, read, and all evil speakings. All evil speaking. Yo, other girl there, oh, I'm to her, other boy there, what? We should, should stop those things, Virgin. Stop those things, read on. As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word. So we have to be born again. Our knowledge, have to, our understanding have to change. You understand? We have to look up each other as princes of God because you are the Israelites. And Israelites are prince of power of God. You, you are the greatest men who ever walked the earth. We are at the bottom because we broke God's commandment. The white man is not greater than you, brother. You are the King David and King Solomon and Christ are your forefathers. You understand me? Read on. But all as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word, that he may grow thereby. If so, 
be ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious, to whom coming as... All right, get me Ephesians 5 and 1 now. Ephesians 5 and 1, I'm going to bring up those teachers after. Ephesians 5 and 1, let's get that. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 1, be ye therefore followers of God as dear children, and walk in love. So God says to walk in love. Love is to keep God's commandments, read. As Christ also had loved us, verse 3. Verse 3, but fornication and all uncleanness. We call fornication now, right? God says, get me Exodus 20, 22, verse 16. God says, a man, a fornicator is a man. A fornication is any sexual sin outside of marriage. Because you have man lay down with, with uh, have sex with animal. You have man have sex with man. You understand? Oh, yeah. Those things are fornication. God said, fornication and what? Fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness. Let it not be once named among you. So fornication, covetousness, malice, envy, let it not what? Me name, let, let it not be once named among you as become saints. As becoming saints because if you are saints of God, you cannot be a false accuser, my sister. You cannot be gossiping of other sisters. You understand? You cannot backbite. You cannot grudge. You cannot envy. But the Christ is saying that should not be named among you. Read. Neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. For this you know, that no whoremonger, nor unclean person, nor covetous man, who is an idolater, has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ. You see that we cannot be a whoremonger. Get me Exodus 22, 16. Because what I'm seeing a lot is a man will just take a woman and go and have sex with her and that's it. Sister, that's it. Are you gone? You understand? Sisters, really, I want you to stop and listen to this. You understand me? Because this is the medicine for you, sisters. And you, sisters, should have respect and honor, you understand, to your own bodies. Now read that scripture. Exodus 22, verse 16. And if a man entice a maid... So it says, if a man entice a maid... Let me tell you something about the men. The men have sweet talk. Say, so I go to the woman, and you see a woman you like, and you go, and you entice her. Oh, she look good, and this and that, and you tell her everything what she want to hear. Say, so I go, and you entice her, read. That is not betrothed. Meaning she's not promised her, she's not married to no one, read. And lie with her. And if you lie, if you mean if you have sex now with that woman, you entice her, until at the point where you start to have sex with her, read. He shall surely endow her to be his wife. <laughs> that is not happening today. The men are sleeping with the women. But no, you don't see your, you don't see wife material in the sisters. Men, that needs to stop. And woman, don't just, you have to lock shop. If you are a woman of God, you have to lock shop. It says we should give our daughters to a man of understanding who knows the laws. And if a man have to understand sisters, you cannot talk to a man who don't understand that he has to marry. He has to have a job. He has to have his own place before he can talk to you. These are things that we have to change come back together these are things that we have to clean up and we need help our brothers here alone cannot do it we need you brothers to come on this side we we, we got to mobile we are in south we are in kingston we are in ochi we are all over because we want our people to hear this word and to repent you understand and this is not what the church we don't want your money we want you to repent you understand me so i'm going to invite up teachers to come and further edify them. shalom this is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.